Dear friends, welcome back to Data Analytics Talks. Hope you are doing great today. So as data architects and engineers, we often design data warehouses. We will have to define primary keys. So when defining primary keys, which is better having surrogate keys or natural key columns? So this is a question which I recently encountered. I would like to answer this question in my way. I will see what is surrogate keys. What are the pros and cons of surrogate keys? What are natural keys? Pros and cons of them. Also, we will have a use case for a surrogate key. Let's begin. So welcome back. Let me repeat the question. Which is better when you're defining a primary key for your connect table or dimension table in your data warehouse? So having a surrogate key or natural key columns. So we have two options. You can have surrogate keys or you can have natural key columns. So which is better? What do you think? I know you are very experienced people or we, you may be already starting working on surrogate keys. Which is better? Yeah, what I think is the only definitive answer you will get on the subject is most people agree that when implementing data warehouse, you have to use surrogate keys for your dimensions and fact table. Do you agree with that? Maybe there is a reason for that. So we will look into that, why people say so. So the major reason, and this is because the source OLTP relational database can change any time due to business requirement and your data warehouse should be able to handle all these changes without needing to change or any update. So you know we have the OLTP and we have OLAP. OLAP is the analytical data. OLTP is a transactional data. This transactional side can change anytime, but your design should not be, your analytical design should not be affected by that. So for that, no surrogate keys can play a very good role. That's one reason. Again, what is a surrogate key? So a surrogate key is a system generated value with no business meanings that is used to uniquely identify a record in a table. So it can be a GUID, it can be a sequence, it can be a unique identifier and so on. But very importantly, there is no business meaning that is used to identify unique record in a table. That is very important when you talk about surrogate key. Surrogate key is a non-business key. So the key itself could be made up of one or more multiple columns. That is composite key, right? So this key is needed to give a uniqueness to a record in a table, especially in the fact tables or dimension table. With an example, you know, so here we have an address table. We have address ID, we have street number, we have street name, we have city, state, zip code and modified date. So in this case, you know, we have address ID. Does it make any sense? It's just one, two, three, four, five, six. Of course, the street number is meaningful. Street name is meaningful. It is all part of the business. Even the zip code, even the state, everything is part of a business, right? But address ID is just giving you a unique identification for this particular row. That is the uh, surrogate. Then coming to a natural key. What is a natural key? A natural key is a column or set of columns that are already exist in the table. They are attributes of the entity within the data model and uniquely identifies the code in the table. Since these columns are attributes of the entity, they obviously have business meaning. So let me take an example here. So we have an employee. In the employee, we have first name, last name, birth date, SSN, address ID, hire date, modified date and notes, right? So in this case, we have address ID, but you know, as already we have seen that this address ID does not make any business value. But we can also see there is something called SSN, Social Security Number, that is SSN. So, you know, everybody, every citizen of America, every citizen of America will have a unique SSN. So, coming to the table, we have Jim Smith, last name, we have birth date, we have the SSN, we have the address ID, and we have the hire date and modifier date. You know, here, at SSN is part of the business entity and makes a lot of sense to the table and this is unique. So now you understand 
what is the difference between a normal natural key and what is the difference between surrogate key a surrogate key is just a key is a system generated it could be a sequence it could be a GUID it could be a unique identifier just to identify a record but you know natural key is part of the entity it can give a lot of meaning to the that particular record it gives a uniqueness to the record so looking at some of the pros of uh, natural keys the key values of business meaning and can be used as a search key when querying the table and secondly the columns and primary key index already exist so no disk extra space is required for extra column index that will be used to buy the surrogate columns and thirdly if your table joins since join columns have meaning for example this can reduce the risk IO by not having to perform extra reads on the lookup table. So we have a couple of pros. Similarly, there are some cons too for natural keys. So what are those? So may need to change or rework key if business requirement change. For example, if you use SSN for your employee, as in the example above, your company expand outside of United States, not all employees would have this ascent. So you would have to come up with a new key for your database table. This is very important. So basically, sometimes you, if you use a primary key as the unique key, you know, when you work cross borders, you will have to bring up some additional unique keys rather than the country specific unique keys. Secondly, more difficult to maintain if key requires multiple columns. It is much easier from the application side dealing with a key column that is constructed with a just a single column. So sometimes you have the composite primary keys that is very challenging, sometimes requires multiple columns when especially when you bring to the reporting side. Then poorer performance since key values is usually larger or is made up of multiple columns. So larger keys will require more I.O. both when inserting updating data as well as when you query. Then we have, you can't end the record until key value is known, right? When you, when you know the primary key, we cannot enter in something new unless the key value is known. So sometimes benefits for an application to load placeholder record in one table, then load the other table and then come back and update the main table. Then finally, you know, it can sometimes be difficult to pick a good key. That may be multiple candidate keys, each with their own trade-off when it comes to design and or performance. So these are the cons of the natural keys. So coming back to the surrogate key. So what is that the good feature of the surrogate key? You know, no business logic in key. So no change based on business requirement, you know, it will be a, some system generated uh, sequence or GUID. You know, there is no, there may not be any business, it need not be changed based on the employee. So employee table above used as integer surrogate key, you could simply add separate column for SIN if you add an office in Canada, right? So basically we will, uh, I will showcase you how and the surrogate keys are placed in a table. Then let's go if maintaining same key strategy across all entities. For example, application could be reused when referring primary key if they are all implemented as a sequential integer. Then it has a better performance since key value smaller. Then we have the surrogate key guaranteed to be unique. So they are system generated, could be sequence, no, that's always guaranteed to be unique. And finally, if a sequence is used, uh, then there is a little index maintenance required since the value is ever increasing, which leads to less index fragmentation. So we have seen uh, the difference between the um, pros and cons of both natural keys and uh, surrogate keys. I hope you understand now about the surrogate keys. So before closing, I would like to uh, discuss a use case. You know, suppose you are working for a client who has employees from US and you know, they started with their system, which will record the details of the American employees. 
and it will have the serial number, full name, date of birth. You know, since uh, these employees belong to US, they will record their social security number or SSN. They have the address, phone number, email address, occupation, and marital status, gender, and nationality. Later, the client started extending their services to other countries, and India would be one of them. You know, in India, the unique identifier for every citizen is other, other number, and in US, it is social security number. So when they try to set up their employee system, you no. Know, they cannot go with uh, the same uh, unique key as SSN, which is followed for American. So that what will happen? So in that case, the system had to change a little bit to accommodate the social security number and other number from countries that we have taken as example. So in that case, you know, now they have introduced a surrogate key. Surrogate key is uh, simply a serial number, a unique identifier for each record. And you know, they introduced something called a national ID. National ID for the American employee is SSN and Indian is for is Aadhaar card. But they also try to bring a distinguisher or identifier, the country specific ID for Indians, it was mentioned as Aadhaar. For US, it is SSL. So you can see there is a surrogate key. And as we already seen that the surrogate key is a non-business key. And it is, has nothing to do with the details of these employees. And you cannot make any search with this. But this is a very simple. It is a unique. It is a single key. And no indexing. And the... Uh, um, those things are much, much easier with this surrogate key. So this is one place where we can use a surrogate key instead of a natural key. Right. And normally when you design uh, the dimension table or fact table in your data warehouse, you will have scenarios where you will have to bring data from multiple countries, multiple regions, maybe in those cases, the existing primary key may not be suffice to support kind of integration. So naturally, you will have to bring surrogate key, which will give a uniqueness to your records. I hope you understand the use case of surrogate key. Thank you for watching.